Let's talk now about cognitive disorders. These are the disorders which are either characterized by the syndromes of delirium, dementia, and the amnestic disorders. Now what typically causes these disorders will either be medical problems or substance abuse problems or probably a combination of the two. What typically occurs in patients who have these disorders is that you tend to see more of them in the patients that are either very young or the patients that are very old, the patients that are very sick, the patients that have medical problems, or the patients that have substance abuse problems, or have been exposed to a variety of substances for a period of time. The most common presenting symptoms will be memory problems. They also have aphasias, where they do not have the ability to have language function. They also have apraxia, so they're unable to carry out specific movements. For example, if they're going to get their pants and they're going to put them on their heads. Or they can have agnosia, where they do not recognize or identify people or objects. Whatever word appears before the word agnosia is what they cannot recognize. So if you have visual agnosia and I show you this pointer, you will not know what it is. But if you put it in your hand and you touch it, you'll say to me, yes, that is a pointer. If you have tactile agnosia, you can basically see that it's a pointer, but if you touch it, you will not know what it is. These patients also have problems with executive functioning, which tends to be the most debilitating. These are the patients that have problems with abstract thinking, they have problems in shopping, they have problems making, and making any kind of plans, or keeping a home. And that's why the patients who have dementia, when the dementia gets severe enough, these are the patients that can burn the house down. These are the patients that get lost very easily, so that's why a lot of them end up in the nursing home for their own safety. When you do the physical exam of anybody who has any one of these disorders, you could find some impairment, such as tremors. You can find some incoordination. You could find some areas of focal deficits. And you might find some medical problems, as well as substance abuse problems as well. When you do the diagnostic test, the things that are done most routinely would either be EEG, neuroimaging, such as CT, MRIs, PET scans, etc., or neuropsychiatric tests as the personality tests, the uh, MMPIs, etc. But from a realistic point of view, the ones that get done most frequently will be the EEGs and the neuroimaging. And in many of these cases, these tests are really nonspecific. So you order them, you find out the results, but they really are not going to be diagnostic in many of these disorders. Now the treatment of all of these disorders is to find out what it is that's causing it. Because if you can find what it is that's causing it, then the treatment will be relatively simple. And you also want to make sure that management is essential. Make sure that the patients are safe. Make sure that you reassure the patients. And make sure that you provide as much emotional support as possible.